Different poles, big question, isn't it? What angle do I need and what pole do I go for? I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. The angle one is uh, is quite a complex one. Like everybody's going to just need it at a different angle, you know. Like some people, it might be you more flatter here, uh, and then there'll be a degree of anywhere between I'd say like 20 to 50 degrees, depending on like your shoulder rotation and mobility, really. And obviously, the other thing is factoring in is like the visibility that you actually need. But if we just start on the basic parameters of different poles and what do they actually do. If you start off with like, this is like a bog standard that pole that's gonna come on nearly every bike nowadays, you know, like you'll buy it from the retailer and it's gonna come with something like this. And you can generally see that it's just a, you know, this is like a, I'd say like a 20 degree angle. Some of them might have like, it's like an S shape like here, it might be really flat. And they're generally really hard for anybody to actually sustain the position. They came around, I think it was like 2008 and Fabian Cancellara was at the peak of what he was doing. Bike technology kind of evolved and developed and everybody thought like, like they said, S Ben was like the way to go. But generally now what we see is that it's quite hard to actually sustain that position. And if you can really like, you know, like drop in and pull into it, then it's great. But for most people, that's not doable. Even getting this out of the box, like, you know, like we've got a bit of adaptability with it. It's gonna get you in a certain point. It's gonna get you riding, but it's probably not gonna be ideal for like most people. Generally speaking, a lot of the poles that we do see, they're quite short for a number of people. Like you can see, this is a, you know, it's a profile design one. It's relatively short. We can probably extend this out another 30 millimeters. But then this, if we start going through a series of these poles now, this is like a USE one, and these vary in degree of angle between 20 to 50 degrees going up in 10 degree increments. What we used to do with a lot of these years ago was we actually used to, you know, like the design was that they'd fit into the pole clamp here, and then, you know, like we'd have a pole angle like this, but what we did with a lot of them was we actually changed like the pole angle. And these are really good because what that means is then we change like this angle, angle here, get you into a much better position. It'll give you a lot more control over the bike. So if you add like the right, right pad into it, again, we'll get into a, a much better position, have much more control over the bike. Again, it is relatively short. Like I think that I probably equate to like 32 centimeters, you know, from the tip to the tip of hair. If you're a taller athlete, sometimes you might struggle with this pole, especially if you're on like, you know, like SRAM or like the single button Shimano. It's not as bad if you're like on a, you know, a DI2 double shifter or like mechanical, you'll gain like another 60 millimeters. It's a great start. You know, like it's like a 45 pound pole. It's not gonna break the bank by any means. Then we move on to something from, this is like a ride sink pole, probably one of my favorite ones. And as you can see, it's got like two kicks into it at this point here and here. And it also, like the top part of it actually rotates. And the idea behind that is, is when we put our hand into this position, it'll actually rotate them in the, to the correct place. If we add the pad into that and we add an angled shim, then what generally happens is that we can shrug into the position a lot better, but we'll get much more control over the bike. And it's just a really nice way of being able to know that you've got like great control with like this hand position. And we normally gain a few watts, you know, like if we go to the wind tunnel, like with a rotation of the hand. This is like really long, you can see, I think from the tip of there, it's like 42 centimeters. It's a great pole, you know, like you want to get like that extra bit of reach. It's a great place to start really. And you know, a pole like that, it's going to come in at around like 69 pounds. So again, made of alloy, it's a, yeah, it's a great, great bit of kit. Then we move on to, you know, in terms of a price point, that, you know, like we're moving on a little bit. If you've got the budget to put this into your bike, it's probably the best pole that you could invest your money into. And you can kind of just see the shape of it 
much more aerodynamic. And the idea behind like this is that we then were able to rest like our, you know, like the bottom part of our arm onto it. And what that will do then is that it, it kind of takes a lot of the tension out of like your shoulders. And it means that we can drop the, the head into place a lot easier. And again, it will put like your hand into like this nice position of being able to rotate. So again, when we test it in the tunnel, it's going to come out a bit quicker. We generally see like a free watt gain, you know, like by placing this in like, into the bike, you resting your floor or I'm onto it. But I would generally say that we probably get around like 10 watts from the athlete. You know, like if we look at like the overall drag throughout a race, it's just a much more sustainable position you know like when all the weights like on like the forearm it actually has like what we call like this uh, you know like a little grip on the end you can either have an ergo grip or a standalone grip and it's got like this finger placement so you know exactly where to place your arm and your hand into play into the position itself and that comes in at 205 pounds it's made of carbon fiber it's actually made by drag to zero this one is they do their own pads and then for each bike that you configure there's all like different shims and different angles that you can build uh, this into the placement of the bike and obviously if you've got a more integrated bike then they've got like plates that you can adapt it to then we move on to uh, this bar is made by speed put bar it's actually custom made to your arm it's probably the most expensive bar on the market at the minute and there is different bars like this on the market like aero coach watch shop drag to zero just making theirs as well this one now i think it comes in at three and a half thousand pounds not for the faint hearted but the idea behind this is that they actually take a full mold of your arm and then each bar is made for each athlete. The one I've got here is for my bike. It's uh, for the use, it's, you know, it's based around like UCI. And the idea behind this is it's a lot wider. It's 45 mil here. And the shape of this cup is actually designed for me. The whole weight is designed to hold you into place. You know, like if you look at those two poles, aero wise, you probably gain uh, around the same, but it just makes it that little bit easier to sustain the position uh, because the width of it here is just that little bit more. Based on budget, there's all these options for you.